How I came to Nugalore was, it wasn't like a, a one and done. I know there's people out there that just have this certain, well, um, through a, a couple of turns of events, when the kids were small, we got invited to participate in Awana and the church camp out. And when we got invited to church, it was um, Deanne Titus had invited us, and it was that which is Jennifer Swartz's mom. And I remember exactly where I was. We were all walking out after the sermon, and I said, "Are all his sermons like that?" That was just like awesome. And I couldn't wait to get back and hear more. And it's just like the Holy Spirit just said, "You're ready." And um, it was just a growing experience after that. That would have been about in 1989, and it's been a growing experience ever since. I think to position yourself every day before the Lord, I think starts first thing in the morning with devotions. And in my prayer journal, um, just over and over, I've written, you know, Lord, I'm standing here with my hands out, palms open, for whatever you have planned for me today. And, um, you just never know. It's just, you know, you want to be available. Maybe there's something going on that day that he has for me, and maybe he doesn't. But you have to be willing to listen when he does give you something big. And I think that's it, is just being open-minded and being willing to listen when those things happen. Uh, there's a lot of things that Greg and I do. We deliver Meals on Wheels a couple times a week. And we really like that. We volunteer for that. And then, um, you know, I, I've been led to do the Bible 101 class, or um, I really enjoyed the teaching kitchen and working with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. And that was that was really enjoyable. That was, that was a learning experience. But um, I think just being available, you know, to what he, Lays. Every day is different, of course, but just being available. Pastor Jeff's sermons have really encouraged me over the years, and it seems like we're always walking out in here being encouraged to be a disciple, and look where God's working and joining. And I know he uses different personalities, but it just seems like whenever I hear a, a need, or I can hear uh, somebody that's maybe a, a want or need or something that, um, maybe I can fill. I always ask myself, is that something I can do? And so, and sometimes it's monetary, you know, they need um, cookies. You're gonna have to go buy stuff to make cookies or they'll need them, whatever it is, and it's monetary. A lot of times it's not. A lot of times it's you pick up on somebody that's just really having a bad time. They're going through a bad time in their life. And I know, um, most of the time, <laughs> it's not my idea. And I know that um, there's been times when I have been told by the Holy Spirit, and it's very clear, you will go over to this woman's house. And I don't even know her very well. You know, I know, I probably, no, you, well, maybe I'll call first. No, you will go over there. Okay, so I just go over to her house. And when I get there, it's like she's almost in tears and she unloads on me and she's turned from the Bible and she's been going through a bad time. And Shannon, you couldn't have come at a better time. And what, you know, that's not me. I didn't do that. I didn't even want to come, you know, but it's just being available. Um, the take the meal. Anybody knows me knows I do not cook. I don't, Greg does all the cooking. I do not cook. And so when he laid on my heart, you will take a meal to these people, it was like, yeah, I don't think so. Yes, you will. And it was so clear. So I said, well, okay, maybe I could go through Taste of Texas. And it was an emphatic, no, you will go in, in the kitchen and you will prepare a meal and take it over. This is not, you can't write a check for it or whatever. And it just ate at me until I got it done. And when I got it done and I got back in the car, it was like, yeah, that's what he wanted me to do. I don't know why. Some of those things you just don't understand, but you just feel like you need to be obedient when he calls you to do things. And there's been a lot of times when I, when it's like that, it's, it's um, so clear what he wants. And sometimes it's just a little gentle nudge, like, you know, I think you could do that. You could go over and 
take, do a card or make a phone call or whatever. And, you know, but it's just being obedient. You know, step out of your comfort zone. That's what I do. I mean, I just try to be obedient. Um, one of my biggest things is I, I really want to hear well done, good and faithful servant. I really want to hear that. And I don't want any regrets. I don't want him to say that he gave me all these opportunities and I didn't take them for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's always surely, you know, surely somebody will do it, you know, but I just think when he lays it on your heart, you need to be, you need to be open to what he's telling you and then be obedient. And sometimes that sends you out of your comfort zone, like it puts you in the kitchen or whatever, but you need to be obedient. And the blessings are just, it's just hard to explain, you know, knowing that you're doing God's will. You know, how he has changed my life is with the little things I've done, I'm getting bigger things to do. And it's, it's neat. And I'm eager every day to see, you know, like I said in my prayer journal, you know, I have my hands out, but, you know, I can't wait to see what today brings. And then it's just a matter of, you know, if he takes me to deliver Meals on Wheels and I get grabbed by some lady and I'm in there for 20 minutes, you know, so be it. I was supposed to be there and I have to be flexible and, and obedient. When you know God gave you something to do and you were obedient, you know, it's like, yeah, that's what I'm here for, you know. I mean, I don't have to do it. My salvation is is secure and I know that, but it's, um, it's having that relationship with him, talking to him and having him tell you to do something and doing it. That's what's awesome. I pray that other people have that, you know, not everybody does and, and I just pray that it's, it's a work in progress. You know, you have to give up the time to sit quiet and know that he's God. I'm not.